There we go. Hello, welcome to today's Bite Size PD uh, with myself and Emma Moss. Uh, today we're going to be doing a quick overview of micro-credentials. And so this one is called Empowering Educators Through Micro-Credentials. Um, you can find us on uh, Twitter or X as it's called now, uh, the Instagrams um, or Facebook. And uh, before we really dive into it, just take a couple seconds and think, what do you know about micro-credentials or what is a question that you have about micro -credentials? seconds. All right. So for today, for our professional development, um, we just want you to take a minute, you know, I've just reflected on the question, but think about a norm you'd like to focus on as you're engaging with this today. So we have being committed, being responsible, being respectful, and being safe. I know for me personally, I love when I'm watching professional development on my own time to make sure I'm being responsible as I actively participate and engage with the questions that are there or the information that's being presented to make sure I'm actually learning and intaking. So just take a moment and think about a norm that you'd like to focus on. Okay, we have your norm, we're gonna keep moving forward. Um, today's learning intentions is that I can explain what a micro-credential is, as well as access the USB micro-credential. So we're going to show you where those are, and we're going to talk a little about what they are today. And our success, success criteria is that you'll know that you're successful when you can identify that micro-credential, as well as create a plan to earn a USB my credit via a micro-credential in the future. So we're going to talk about how you can get that credit today as well. Um, and we want you actually applying what you're learning today in the session. Of course, with everything in Canyon, Canyons, we connect to our MTSS framework. Today, we're looking at instructional content aligned with Utah core standards and standards-based instruction reporting. So we're going to use this instructional content and the micro-credentials that you have to align with what you're already teaching and about what you're learning. Hello, uh, my name is Scott Christensen. Uh, I'm an educational specialist here in Canyons in the Instructional Supports Department. I work on quite a few teams, as I know Emma does as well. Uh, my primary team, though, or my primary uh, um, area of focus is middle school ELA. Perfect. And like Scott said, we work on a lot of teams. Um, my name is Emma Moss, and I am a digital teaching and learning specialist here in the Instructional Supports Department. Scott and I actually share an office, which is kind of fun that we get to work together on this project today, but I'm excited to be here and I know that he is too, because we have a lot of great things to share with you. So we're excited to get to know you. Here's our plan today. So we're gonna talk about the problem that comes with micro-credentials and it may be similar to a question that you wondered if you're watching this. Then we're gonna talk about a hack, a hack in action and what you can do tomorrow. So I love this setup because it's gonna take really what we're learning about and help you apply it, which is great. So here is our problem or our question that we're asking. And that is how do we honor educator expertise and meet their professional learning needs of where they are? So I don't know about you, but sometimes I've sat through professional development and I just try to take the one nugget because maybe some of it I've learned before or some of it I haven't. And so today we're gonna to talk about micro-credentials and how they can honor what you already know and then help you grow, which I love. So we're going to go through a scenario with a teacher that Emma and I both know very well, and it's Mr. Mossenson. So in this scenario, Mr. Mossenson has been teaching for 15 years. He's a teacher leader. He attends trainings, webinars, works hard to stay abreast of the latest technology. He is a complete expert on Google tools, all of Google stuff. He, he's an expert on in fact, he's the teacher that everyone goes to for advice, all things Google. If the coach is not on campus, they go to Mr. Mossenson. Here's the problem though, Mr. Mossenson is stuck. So what's the hack then? He's learned all this great stuff. He's taught himself, he's worked uh, you know, in, in his own time or, or he's gone out of his way to go to trainings. 
that and he and he already can show that he can do something. Uh, in fact, he's teaching people how to do it. So the hack would be micro credentials because they help educators get unstuck. Um, here's how: one, uh, it, it it provides a visible recognition eh, recognition of demonstrated competency, and that's what the that's the key word in all of this. It's something he already knows how to do. He's competent at all things Google, and now he can get recognized for that. As a result, it also can lead to leadership opportunities. Um, he's a teacher leader, but maybe he's not on the BLT and he wants to go that route. Um, uh, you know, maybe there's another committee he'd want to be on. Um, and the last is that it provides USBE credit or that you can use towards a lane change, um, which is more money, which I think most people are happy with. <laughs> so, and a USBE credit, one USBE credit is equivalent to one semester hour in college. So that's kind of what that means. Um, micro credentials can then be posted to your web page, social media, you can add them to your resume. Um, and so people can see sort of, oh, they're bringing this to the table. So given that Mr. M Mr. Mossenson has heard about this micro credential thing, he wants to get unstuck. So he meets with his instructional coach and he asks that they know anything about micro credentials. Coach has kind of heard some stuff about it. Maybe not, you know, like I've heard the word. It's kind of scary sounding. Um, it sounds very sciencey or computery. And uh, and so the coach says, hey, I know that if you go to your Midas professional learning account, that there is an entire section with hundreds, if not thousands of micro credentials. And so the coach leaves and Mr. Mossenson starts uh, thinking, okay, maybe this is what I need to do. And he rifles through his desk because he forgot his Midas username and password and he has it written down on a post-it somewhere. So he's going to find that. Good news is, is that Mr. Mossenson found it. So, and he's a Google expert. We talked about this. So we're going to show you the one today um, that is the Google-based micro-credential. So this is on the Midas education website. They have a little tab here called micro-credentials. If you click on that, and it's going to take a second to load because I'm going to leave this website. But if you click on that, maybe it won't load right now. But if you click on that, it'll let you sort through. There's um, a side panel that has ones. And he goes down and he finds the one for Google Fundamentals. So there's a couple of terms here that you may want to know. Um, one of them is called a stack. So with a stack, you can stack micro-credentials. And so those are different skills that together they create um, one earning, which is Google Fundamentals. So that's the stack. Um, this is one of those um, micro-credentials inside the stack, which is called Facilitate and Inspire Student Learning and Creativity with G Suite. So just think about it. Um, these are sort of like, if you were, a stack is sort of the degree that you get. And these individual micro-credentials are the classes that you take to get that overall degree. That's an easy way for me to understand it. Like having a framework like, okay, but they stack on top of each other so you can get that. When you open it up, it has some key parts. So on one, it'll have the name of the micro-credential. It'll tell you a little bit about your micro-credential. And then it'll talk about how to earn it. So for this one, you submit two types of evidence from the list below to demonstrate your competency. And then you also complete a short written or video reflection. Um, there is some fees associated with these, but they're very nominal. This one's only $20. So sometimes I've paid more for that for classes. Um, as Scott said, this is $20. And if this one is worth half a USB micro-credential, then that's half of a college semester hour for 20 bucks, which is an amazing price. Um, but it adds some clarifications, gives you some important terms, as well as a background scenario. So if you want to walk through and be like, oh yeah, that's how I feel about it. But this is the part that you need to know. So this is what you submit. So they have categories of that you submit for evidence. So one of them is the preparation and planning. And then you select one piece of evidence. So this one has you select a lesson plan that demonstrates effective instruction on managing passwords. So if you are already teaching a class, like I know for me, I used to teach digital literacy and I had a lesson on managing passwords. And I had information for my students. So I could submit the lesson plan for that lesson I was already doing as my evidence. Then there's also implementation evidence. So for this one, you select one of these evidence options and you can either do a video, um, effective search on smart skills, 
or you can do a like a screencastify and narrate it. So I could narrate my lesson plan with my Google Slides I already made and talk about that. And for Mr. Mawsonson, he's done this. So it really is just taking that time for him to say, oh, here's my lesson plan that I updated that I already made for maybe my C test. And here's portfolio. And here's my little video that's um, five to 10 minutes long of how I use that with my students covering these key points. And then they you upload it. It has the review criteria. So if you want to see like with a rubric and then you do a reflection with these three questions and that's, that's it. Like it's really not, um, I think sometimes when people think about micro credentials, they're like, oh, that's so hard. But oftentimes it going back to that problem that Mr. Mossenson is having, it's going back to what he already knows. He's a Google expert. He already gives a thing on passwords. So it's just uploading that evidence that already exists. And then what I love too is that there's resources at the bottom of micro credentials. So if you're like not quite sure where to start with this, or I'm missing, let's say you had a lesson plan, but you weren't sure how to use like a video recording tool. They have some stuff down here that can walk you through it. So it's all right there in one helpful spot for you, which I think is amazing. It shows you exactly what to do, gives you key terms. Um, it really is setting you up for success. And in here, set Mr. Mawsonson up for success. Thanks, Emma. Um, and I think that's important to note, uh, getting started with micro-credentials would be to focus on things you already do um, so that you can get, you know, show that competency and be um, honored, right, for for the knowledge that you bring. Um, so Mr. Mossenson found his password. He's still got some reservations a little bit about this because again, that phrase micro-credential can sound a little scary. So he meets with several other teachers who have completed them. And you know he wants to know about the relevance, the time commitment. Uh, Emma and I snuck in and uh, listen as we eavesdrop on this conversation between Mr. Mossenson and another teacher in the building. So I first heard about micro-credentials last year in our district professional development training. I had never heard of them before, but I think it's super incredible that we can demonstrate what we already do as teachers, that we can earn these um, through what we already demonstrate in the classroom. In the decade that I've been in public education so far, I've sat through some professional development that may not be individualized or always applicable to a certain content area, to a certain teacher. Micro-credentials, I feel like, meet you where you are. Um, you can go earn the ones that apply best to you. And sometimes you're sitting through those long, time-consuming training. You could be spending time with students. You could be getting better in your practice. And micro-credentials can be done at your own time, your own speed, and you don't necessarily have to spend the same amount of hours as a sit-down professional development. This year, our, student, our school has focused on a micro-credential a month. And specifically, um, the ones we've just recently done are related to Canvas. And so they did Canvas assessment. They did Canvas communicator. And as that I got in there and started working on them, I was like, wait, I've put a lot of time into Canvas, a lot of my own hours and time into this that I would love to demonstrate what I can do. And so I started going through it with kind of contagious. And then if I didn't know how to do it, I wanted to go figure it out so I could earn the micro-credentials. So I feel like it's a fantastic way for teachers to demonstrate what they already do in their classroom. But it's also a great way to encourage them to learn more, to work with other people, to figure it out, and then to go demonstrate with evidence um, what they're able to do. And so in a way, I feel like it is a competency-based learning, which is what we are, and personalized, which is what we're trying to emphasize in our classroom throughout the state of Utah. And I feel like that's a way for teachers through their own professional development for it to be individualized, to meet them where they are, to show what they can do. And if they can't do it yet, to have them master the skills and demonstrate that they can eventually earn them. And then it just so happens that in our school district, it comes with a pay increase, right? Like I can earn, now that I have my grad degree, I could go for 30 credits to get an additional increase in my salary. And so for me, that was an extra motivator. Just why I've been so into them lately, because I'd like to get the next increase in pay and be compensated for what I do. Utah micro-credentials. Personalize your professional learning. Yes. 
So, Mr. Mossenson, uh, you know, he's he's like, OK, this is sounding good for me. Um, but he's got a few things, a uh, few more questions. And so he he hears from somebody that micro credentials are too much work. How would you respond to that, Emma? You know, I feel like the thing is, is that micro credentials really honor the work that you've already done. We've said that a couple of times, but for Mr. Mossenson, you saw that Google micro credential. It really was turning in a lesson plan taking a video and reflecting on the knowledge that he already has. So it's really just honoring what you already know and already do as an educational professional. So, All right. Our next myth, you can't do anything with a micro credential. Scott, what do you think about this one? Well, I, I would say that first off, um, and she, she just hit on it is that um, you can jump up a pay scale is something that's pretty big. Um, the other thing uh, with micro credentials, and Emma mentioned you mentioned this earlier, is stacks. Um, you could actually earn micro credentials and stacks towards an endorsement. Um, I know that uh, in English language arts, they're all there right now to get your ELA endorsement if that was a route you really wanted to go go to. Um, I don't know if you've been teaching ELA already and you feel like you could do it. Um, also, once you have completed a micro credential then you can actually uh, review micro-credentials and get paid by uh, the state to review other micro-credentials. So there's quite a bit you can do that goes beyond just having it on your resume. Okay, but then someone might ask, uh, all, are all micro-credentials the same as far as workload, as far as uh, what, what you do? You know, they, they aren't the same, um, but they're designed to to show that you can demonstrate that knowledge. Um, so I think sometimes like um, you saw with that Google one, it asked for a couple of things, but they're supposed to be personalized. And so they have multiple options. So under each of those categories where you had like the planning and preparation and the implementation, there are options for you as an educator. So they're not the same, but they're designed for you and it's really supposed to be a personalized learning path to represent what you know or what you're learning i think we've talked about this a lot in the light of like well you already know how to do this well what if you don't what if you wanted to go get your ela endorsement and you don't well then you can choose the options that show demonstrated competency of what you are learning or have learned which i think is awesome okay our next one micro credentials are confusing <laughs> I, I'll admit that that maybe looking at the page in the first time, it can be a little bit confusing just because it's, there's so much there. They want to cover all the bases. But I think, again, like we saw with the Google one, even though it was, what, two or three pages in length, mm -hmm. it was really only asking for three things. And so I think almost taking that page and breaking it into here's what I need to do um, takes that confusion out. Um, so initially, like with anything, it's a little confusing, but at the end of the day, it's, it's really not that confusing. It's pretty simple. Makes sense. Um, so micro credentials are forcing me to learn something new. They're not forcing you. <laughs> um, I think that there are two routes and I kind of alluded to it. One it's honoring what, you know, like with Mr. Mossenson, he knows Google, so he's going to get a Google one. Um, if you want to learn something new, this is your choice. Like, I think that's what I really do like about it is that it is very personalized. Um, I wanted to pull it up cause we talk about the Google one a lot, but I want to show a different one just so people aren't like, well, you only chose the Google one. Um, <laughs> cause I, like I, I've been there, um, as a teacher, I know that. So uh, there are a lot of different ones that you can choose. So we talked about those stacks, um, there is the Google one. If you scroll down here, Google fundamentals, there's also Google advanced. Um, but let's look up something that maybe, I don't know, Scott, pick one. What one should we show? Uh, why don't we do uh, cooperative learning? Cooperative learning. Okay. So you click on it. It's going to load. So this is the stack of cooperative learning. And you can see they're all worth 0.5 USB credit. Do you want to do team building, processing information, knowledge building, or class building? Let's do team building. Okay, let's go check out the team building one. So I wanted to give you a different example, especially in terms of learning something new, um, just so you didn't feel like we only showed one example. Um, but this one, same thing, fee, $20, totally nominal. 
um, clarifications, it has important terms. So let's go down and look at the evidence. So implementation, you need to submit a five to 10 video of your classroom in which you effectively and efficiently organize students into teams with a positive team identity. Okay, let's pause. How many educators out there have you like said, okay, we're gonna organize into teams and then you're gonna make a poster that represents your values. That is absolutely, participating in a learning activity as a support to learning. I know I am like a goose chase in my classroom. Like this would absolutely <laughs> do that. <laughs> um, well, well, I think any any educator who's ever done a jigsaw, right? <laughs> like the, has done this right here. Right, yeah, exactly. Um, or you can submit an observation from a colleague. So you don't want to take a video that's a little nerve wracking for you. Have your instructional coach come in, watch it, submit the observation results. Um, there's also a supplemental one. So you could give a testimonial from students. So let's say it was something you did a week or two ago or last month and you've used them throughout your classroom. You could have your students write testimonials about how they use Teams and what they learned and that could count. And then they there's the review criteria. Here's your reflection prompts. And that is it. And look, Scott, Jigsaw right there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so- so, even, so we're talking about three things again. Yeah. I mean, that's it. Okay. Yep, yep. So like in terms of, yes, the Google example one, maybe Mr. Mossenson also wanted the one about cooperative learning. Well, here's, here's what you can do. And again, talking about, this actually has you submit one piece of evidence. So one of these. And then the reflection prompt. So actually we're talking about submitting one thing that I guarantee that you've done. Yeah. So, cause this one says one of the evidence options below. So yeah, for this one. So yeah, they are, they are not all the same. Um, and maybe, maybe you've never organized a jigsaw, but it's not supposed to be something that's super overwhelming for you. Okay. Thanks for letting me jump in there. Our last myth. Micro-credential USB credit is not worth as much as other opportunities. Scott, what would you say to this? You know, if I had the the opportunity to, um, I don't know, uh, start my own company around fly fishing, um, it that might be worth more. Uh, you know, if I had uh, the opportunity to, um, I don't know, present at, at a convention for $150,000, yeah, that you're right. Um, but as far as what I think what we've just shown, it's pretty simple. Um, as long as you keep the focus on, well, no, no I mean, like you said, it can go both ways, but, um, the simpler route, probably the best entry route would be, what am I already doing that I want to show and that, that I can do that I can pull evidence for that I can do. Um, but I also think it'd be really cool to, you know, in, in my PLC, all of us do a one together. And learn from each other. Um, so, if this is saying USB credit is not worth as much as other opportunities, I mean that's it's pretty vague. What are the opportunities? But we said earlier, uh, USB credit is worth one semester hour. Um, I don't know. I I'll look it up and I'll put it in our comments at the end of this. But uh, what is one semester hour at the U? Ooh, what, do you, I don't know. what does that cost? And then we can say, okay, well, this costs twenty dollars to do what you already know. So. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it's really easy. Okay. So what do you do tomorrow? So, yeah. so one thing, and Emma showed this earlier, um, the, the Midas site is, um, you know, it's a finicky, it's a finicky beast Midas. And so, um, but it's, it's powerful in the way, in the way it can host things, almost like Canvas used to be, it's getting better. Um, but I think the first thing you have to do is have a plan. And so, and I can't hit the hyperlink on Oh, it, I can open it. Yeah. So the first thing is to just figure out how to digest that down. Um, and so this was a implementation plan that I had created with, for my middle school ELA teachers um, that they did in teams. But first I think was just to go through and review sort of what is, what is this about and then have any notes and then um, looking at the options for preparation, for implementation, what is the review criteria, what's the rubric that they're going to use, and then what is the reflection prompt. So what I would do is, you know, I would go in, I would want to know what I was looking at, like Mr. Mossenson, and this can be Google, so he's got an idea of that. 
And then I would go in and I would just start gathering or um, kind of sifting through and distilling um, what it's actually asking of me, which again, the first time might take a while. And by a while, I mean like 15 minutes. But I think after that, you can see you can you can jump right through one in a couple minutes and go, okay, this is what they're asking of me. So one, I would probably use a plan like this. Some people like using structured plans like this. Some people don't, um, but I would. And then the other, I'll show you. Yep, you go pull that up. The other, this, and this is what we, um, oh, did I put that one? Oh, I put the wrong one in there, but this is fine too. Um, this is a step-by-step -step guide uh, from, um, from USBE, and it goes through exactly where everything is and what to select um, as you go in. So plan, here, here's how I go with it. Hmm, what do I, what do I want to demonstrate competency with? Well, um, you know, when it comes to uh, classroom conversations and creating class discussions, I can do that in my sleep. Um, then I'm going to go into Midas. I'm going to type that in. I'm going to read about it. And then I'm going to start planning. What do I already have? What do I need to create? And then that's how I would go ahead and get started. Yeah. Great step, Scott. So some really great resources there. Um, I'm moving forward. So, okay. We just want to check in. Um, today's ICANN was explaining the importance of and how to access the micro-credentials. So we showed you how to access them. Uh, Scott talked through a great plan about how you can identify a micro-credential and had a place for you to create that plan. So we'd like you just to take a minute, pause us, open these documents up from the slides, go ahead and figure those out, have, make sure you have them open so that you can come back to them and you can make sure that you are successful in this learning opportunity. Um, a couple of resources for you. You can watch more teacher experiences like the one that we eavesdropped on from the UEM teacher experiences. Um, this is the resource I think Scott was looking for, this ELA slides, one way to look for a micro-credential. So kind of framework, how can you look for that? Do you want me to open we that? Created a, that's okay. I'm, okay. But we had created a roadmap of what that might look like in a year. Perfect. Um, so. Awesome. So check that out for sure. Um, if you want to know just like textbook definition, you're wanting to read about micro-credentials, um, this is, there's the step-by-step -step guide, the plan, what is it, and then a quick start for working on micro-credentials. And our last thing, um, these are some important links. So here's where you can access all of the bite-sized PD. So this and many others, as well as we'd love your feedback. Um, go ahead and put both of our names in there. And we'd love to hear what you think after you watch this. So thank you. And Scott, you know, yeah, thank you so much. Oh, sorry. Let's go ahead. Nope. I was just going to say, I know Scott's really grateful too. So you filled in perfectly, but um, thanks for watching along with us. So thank, thank you. And don't hesitate to reach out to Emma or myself if you're interested in getting started with micro credentials. Absolutely. All right. Thank you. Signing out.